Greetings. In today's session, we will discuss about pile load test, which is referred as a field load test to estimate load carrying capacity of a pile. In this method, following arrangement has been used. If you talk about the planner, the test pile is being supported by the anchor piles nearby it. Uh, these anchor piles help uh, us to provide a loading system over this test pile. If you go towards the elevation part, anchor piles are going to support the reaction beams and also the main beam which is passing through the test pile. The hydraulic jack is uh, mounted over the test pile supported by a base plate where the with the help of hydraulic pressure the load is applied on a test pile and it is controlled by the dial gauges whereas the dial gauge which is attached with the plate and the your pile is used to record the incremental settlements so if you talk about the various equipment used in the test pile setup is anchor girder or reaction girder here the top reaction girder or anchor girders are the hydraulic jack which is placed above exactly above the test pile anchor piles which are going to support the reaction girder and provide a assembly to, for setting of the main beam test pile this is the center pile which is used which is under observation dial gauges which are mounted along the test piles and reaction trusses in the case when the truss loading is being used uh, this type of setup is also recommended by IS2911 part 4 2013. Let's go towards the test procedure. In case of test procedure, stepwise we will discuss step 1. The setup consists of two anchor piles provided with an anchor girder or reaction girder at their top. So here the two anchor piles in a transfer direction. The test pile is installed between the anchor piles as like foundation pile is installed. So, so the similar way the test pile is being installed as we are going to ins install the foundation pile. The test pile should be at least 3 times the B or 2.5 meter clear from the anchor piles. 3 times the B here the B is the width okay or 2.5 meter clear from the anchor piles it means clearance of between the anchor pile and the test pile has been specified it should be 3 times the width now, or it should be at least 2.5 meter away from the test pile then the third step the test is conducted after a rest period of three days after the installation in sandy soil and period of one month in silts and soft clays means here we are going to provide the setup prior uh, to the observation observation is made after certain time elapse for the case of sandy soil the time elapse is about three days whereas in case of your silty and soft uh, soils the period elapse is about a month the load is applied through the hydraulic jack resting on the reaction girder or truss girder the measurement of pile moment are taken with respect to the fixed reference marks so here the load is transferred with the help of react uh, the reactive mechanism which is provided with the, uh, the force will be provided with the help of jack, hydraulic jack which is resting uh, on the girder and thereby it is going to lift the girder and there is a reaction transfer to the pipe the load is applied in equal increment of about 20% of the allowable load. So here suddenly the load is not applied. The load is applied in stage wave in incremental way. 20% of the allowable load, uh, the, the estimated allowable load, statically estimated allowable load is applied on it. And this is the setup how the test piles has, uh, the test pile, uh, test plate arrangement is been done. Here is the girder which is going to serve, which is going to rest on a hydraulic jack here there are these are the two anchor piles and uh, this one is called a reaction girders the when we apply the force the girder the jack will try to lift up this and thereby the, the there will be lifting of this main main beam there the this will be restrained by the reaction provided by the anchor pile thereby the force will be provided uh, transferred to the a test pile here in a reverse manner and the test pile will get penetrated into the ground which will be measured with the help of reaction react uh, dial gauge nearby it in case of truss uh, supported element the geometry is look like like, like instead of main girder we are going to provide a truss element a skeletal element which is supported on the anchor piles and sup cross supported with reference to the reaction girder same mechanism will happen the reverse reaction will be applied on the test pile and the test pile will show the penetration and based on that penetration we are going to estimate 
in the amount of settlement so in uh, step 6 settlement should be recorded with the three dial gauges okay the uh, dial gauges are provided along the three geometrical directions now uh, along the test pile uh, with reference to some uh, settings or with reference to some ear markings nearby it as shown in this figure each state of the loading is maintained till the rate of movement of the pile top is not more than 0.1 mm per hour in sandy soil and 0.02 mm per hour in case of clay soil as maximum of the two hours so here the stage is maintained uh, the rate of movement of the pile is observed the rate of movement for sandy soil it should be 0.1 mm per hour and for the case of your clay soil it should be 0 0.02 uh, mm per hour under each load increment settlements are observed at 0 0.5 1 2 4 8 12 16 20 and 60 minutes means at incremental time period we are going to observe what the what amount of settlements has been occurred the loading should be continued up to twice the safe load or the load at which the total settlement reach a specific value here he has specified that the loading which we will apply it should be twice the safe load which we have estimated with reference to static formulas uh, or the load at which the total settlement reaches a specified value if you have a specified value of settlement with us will go up to that value the load is removed in the same decrements at one hour intervals and the final rebound records 24 hour after the entire load has been removed so here the removal of the load is also sequentially it is being uh, at an interval of one hour decrements has been done for an interval of one, uh, one hour and after 24 hours we are going to measure what rebound we have got then there is the we are going to sketch up the plot between the gra uh, between load and settlement and from that graph we are going to estimate predict the uh, ultimate load carrying capacity of your pile so this method is also called as a destructive method as in this method the, to the test pile is going to totally get damaged so here we can call we can uh, nomenclate it as a destructive method of testing so let us talk about the curves the responses so responses are plotted in with reference to load applied and the settlement in case of your uh, dense stiff uh, stiff clay the curve is assumed to be a non-linear and then up to uh, a certain value a peak value will be there and thereafter uh, the load carrying capacity will get seized but a incremental load the settlement is going to increase linearly okay so here we will get a peak value if we drop this peak value on the curve we can say this is the ultimate load carrying capacity of your pile under uh, dense and stiff uh, stiff soils but in the case of loose and soft stiff soil the, there is a constant increment in the settlement and it will goes on for a long period but for this case we are going to have a bilinearization and where the intersection will appear that value will consider as a the ultimate load carrying capacity of your pile now uh, when the, the data is too much large and uh, we are not going to have the scaling on your arithmetic uh, graphic graphs then we are going to use a log logarithmic graph where on uh, we will turn the values of load into log scale and the values of settlement into a log scale and the response curve will be like this okay so here the the point where they are going to have uh, what we say change in the uh, path that point we call it as a ultimate load carrying carrying point of that particular uh, pile so results in case of estimation of results we are going to first assume at the ultimate load qu the load settlement curve becomes either linear as curve number two here at ultimate load the load settlement curves become linear the, the corresponding value we are going to consider as a Alt, uh, your ultimate load or there is a sharp break uh, as in the curve number one as shown in figure number figure i have not given the number to the figure here i will say here only figure here there is a sharp curve that's why we have got down gone for the bilinearization the safe load is usually taken as one half of the ultimate load so here whatever the ultimate load we will get we will say the safe load is nothing but one half of that one we are going to scale up the things according to is2911 the following uh, assumptions are made for the observation of ultimate load the allowable safe load is taken as one half of the load at which the total settlement is equal to 10 percent of the pile diameter so in this case the is code has specified the load has to be taken one half the total load when the total settlement is equals to the 10 percent of the pile diameter or 
allowable load may be taken as two third of the final load at which the total settlement is 12 mm which ever is less okay the next one third one point allowable load may be taken as two third of the final load which causes net settlement that is residual settlement after removal of load of 6 mm so here three criteria has been given to okay, estimate the results of the uh, pile load test okay the next topic we'll discuss in upcoming uh, lecture series is will be the SPT standard penetration test and cone penetration test applicable for estimation of ultimate load carrying capacity of pile till then be safe stay at home and be, be healthy thank you